Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today we need to talk about something that so many of you have been asking me about. Where is my SLS AMG Black Series? It's one of my favourite Shmi mobiles, but we haven't seen it in a while. Typically, it would be living here at the garage in this lineup up towards this end, in fact, where the GT8 is at the moment, alongside it in this gap would be the GT Black Series, which is tucked in just over there under the mezzanine at the moment. But it's been a notable absentee for far too long, and that's had lots of you wondering, what's happened to it? Have I sold it? Where's it gone? What's the story? And today we shall explain all. I haven't actually seen it myself, I think for about five months. Today, we're heading out to Avant-Garde to have a full update to explain all what's been going on, why you haven't seen it, and how we're gonna be seeing it again properly very, very soon. <laughs> Before we get on the road, let's recap this a little bit. My SLS AMG Black Series is a car I bought back in early 2020, just before everything went crazy, a time that I was a bit nervous after I'd taken delivery of it, whether this was a good idea. But fast forward two and a half years, I've driven it about 12 or 13,000 miles since, most of which was in that first six months. And it's probably worth, get this, approaching double what I bought it for back at the time. And as a result, it's a car certainly with longevity in mind and keeping it here in the collection that I need to look after. Now, because of those early miles being based in Germany, it was the time when I was spending a significant proportion of my time out in Germany. It did a lot of very fast driving on the Autobahn at 200 miles an hour, and it did a lot of laps on the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Two things that combined with the upgrades that I did after the respread Chartwell to Mystic Blue and making the wheels silver, we then went to do the full Rentec R1 package to up the power. And as a result of that, it's been running very, very hot, very hot, very frequently. Now you might remember last year, it departed from the collection temporarily after we did the audio upgrades with Cambridge Car Audio to source a new ECU that we needed for the car. And part supply over the last year or two has been a disaster. It took a very long time to track down an ECU. Eventually we got one, that's why it was absent for a while. But this time around, I decided considering the values, considering my intentions with the car down the line, we need to, to get it right. We need to do a lot of things. So it went over to Avant-Garde about five months ago, five or six months ago, after I had driven it back from Germany, literally on Christmas Day. And the reason for that was to do the full investigation, to work out everything that we needed to resolve and to source all of the parts. Now, sourcing parts, as I said, has been incredibly difficult. And because it needed lots of things like electrical components, wiring elements, sensors, these kind of things, it's been really difficult to track it all down. And that's why it's been quite a lengthy process you know it's a seven or eight year old car now it's hard to get all of these things but we need to do it right we need to do everything completely correctly and today we're going to be heading over to avant-garde to have the full update with it to explain why it hasn't been here a little bit more and to see it in person because i've not seen it myself for quite a long time and to be honest i'm itching to get back behind the wheel the sls black series like i mean many of the other cars but especially the ford gt and the amg gt black series are permanent Schmiemobiles. They are cars that are going to be sticking around for the long haul and it's one that I know so many of you have been missing hearing and seeing on the channel in recent times. So we've got the E500 outside at the moment. It is quite an early start but we're going to head all the way over to Avant-Garde to go catch up with the SLS to see it again back on the channel to find out everything about it and to hopefully get some good news about it being back and returning here very soon. You might be wondering why am I here driving in the E500, the E500 wagon, which you might have seen on the Schmuseum channel I picked up recently, the latest Schmiemobile, you could say, this 2003 T-model E500 estate, which means we've got a lovely V8 engine, we've got all of the technology and equipment and luxury features of a car that's nearly two decades old, and we are cruising down some tight, twisty English countryside roads where something like this, to be honest, is actually quite comfortable and pleasant, but isn't necessarily entirely at home. Now, on previous visits out to Avant-Garde, we've been with the GT Black Series, with the C63 Black Series. I think I probably went with the G63 at one point because we had an update in the past with Steve at Avant-Garde about some of the issues that the car had on the previous visit, but it's always worth bringing it to hands that you know are reliable and going to know exactly what's going on with the car. So even though we're not exactly around the corner from base, it's a good place to be able to bring the cars and we've got this small diversion right now down some 
quite interesting <laughs> roads, shall we say, out in the west of England towards Bristol, which I'm enjoying driving, even though it's a completely different experience to the supercars. And we've picked this car up, as you'll know from the Schmuseum channel, for some towing tasks, some garage errands, just a car to throw some stuff in every now and then. But I want to get a little bit more familiar with it myself. So hence today, taking it for this journey to meander down the lanes. And it's amazing actually how well it rides and drives. We've got the air suspension system. We've got tech that, oh, random cat just running down the road. We've got tech that didn't, I guess back 20 years ago or 19 years ago when this car was delivered, was very, 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 very much from the future. And it's just all around works, everything works. There's nothing in here that doesn't, which is quite amazing as well. So hopefully we will get to Avant-Garde before long. It's about 40 minutes or so from here. And then we'll be able to take a look at the SLS in detail, run through it all, go through everything that has been wrong with it, is being worked on, is being put together. And then before too long from now, it will all be back in one piece again and we'll be able to come back out to pick it up and obviously very much looking forward to that. On the other hand, this is still a car with a big V8 and that's what makes it so fun. We could have gone with a diesel, which might have been better for probably towing stuff around, but just to have that grumble in the background and it's not the loudest thing in the world, but you know that it's there and you feel the talk of it and it's just, I don't know, it's just cool, the E500. You know, back when the 500 on the back of the car represented the engine, it's a five liter V8. Anyway, not too far to go, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing this car again. This is where things are pretty cool. Not one, but two Mercedes SLR McLarens here being serviced at Avant Garde. But also, of course, we have my SLS AMG Black Series. And it might be cliche for me to say this, but having not seen it for a while, the color of this car, the Mystic Blue, is so nice, especially with the silver wheels that we did at Whoops with the Mystic Blue insert for the AMG logo as well. I have missed this car, but we need to talk through everything that we've got going on here, all of the components laid out, and we will be joined in a moment by Steve to discuss things in more detail, but it's not every day that you get to see into the engine bay and into the engine itself of the SLS Black Series, and also some of the other components around, the headers, for example, and the things that are going to be done in terms of the heat shielding, but all of the parts are here. Everything is here now to continue on this. So let's go grab Steve and have a better look through it all. Hey, Steve, so here we are. Hi, Tim, welcome back. Thank you, it's good to be back, and it's fascinating to see everything. Yeah, when it's in bits, you get a real idea of what we're doing. Yeah. And um, it is in bits, as you can see. I don't know if you want to pop your camera in, first of all, and we'll have a look at the engine. I mean, obviously, we brought the car back to you a fair few months now ago now. You had a full inspection and kind of looked through everything to ascertain what it needed to do, what we needed to do. Yeah, so you've obviously had some fun in this car, in the Nürburgring <laughs> and, and other things. And it's had various modifications already, as we know, to the uh, exhausts and that kind of thing. She's got a lovely note when she runs. Um, but there has been some concerns with that, namely with heat soak issues. Um, and also the engine did have a little bit of a rattle when it was on idle, specifically on startup as well, which is a little bit common to AMG engines anyway. Um, aligned to that, there was also the dimension of maybe some loss of horses. So for us, it was a little bit of investigation to see if any of all of those things tied together. Um, and if there was, what did we find? Um, it might be uh, lead us to, to fixing it and hopefully regaining those lost horses. Yeah, I, t I talked a fair bit, obviously, before now about how this car has run frequently at 200 miles an hour plus. It's done a number of Nürburgring laps. It's been driven hard. And as a result, you have heat issues. And this was one of the problems we faced a little bit before. Um, things like wiring looms taking the brunt of that, really. Yeah. And parts like these being very hard to source at the moment. Um, but obviously, this time around, you've gone significantly further because yeah. we are looking at parts of the engine you do not normally get to see. That's right. So essentially what we started doing was just engine diagnostic basics, which is checking things like cylinder leakage, compression tests, going through the diagnostics on with the sentry diagnosis machine to see if there was any misfiring going on, that kind of thing. And really everything checked out. It had good compression, good cylinder leakage, uh, hadn't lost anything. So that tells us really that a lot of the internals of the engine are still absolutely serviceable and in really good condition. Um, 
But a couple of things we did find when we, had the, we took the rocker covers off that we weren't happy with, that we could actually see visually, um, started here really. Um, it's always a bit difficult to see the actual condition of the, the complete valve uh, lifter or the hydraulic lifter. But once we got it out, we can see that a lot of the, the heated co heat coating, the protective coating that they put on at AMG, um, is worn away all the way around here. And you can see certain blueness to the, to the bucket as well, indicating some, some heat issues have, have gone in there. Now these could just be out of life essentially yeah. and that's why it had a little bit of a rattle when she was idling yeah. and, and on startup the actual main mechanicals uh, of the top end of the engine this is the the camshaft out of bank one on the inlet side it's in really good condition there's no wear on any of the lobes that we can visually see there's no pickup um, no indication that it's got excessively hot through through bluing or anything like that mm -hmm. so we're very happy that the actual mechanicals of the engine are in really good condition um, and these really on the early iterations of this, the 6.3 engines were yeah. quite common uh, yeah. almost then, serviceable replacements for, really for comparison those are the yeah so these are the, the brand new ones that we've we've got from from mercedes amg from germany as you see they're nice and new you know all the protective coating are, is on them and uh, we'll be installing those later on this week so uh, ready to rebuild it's always amazing to see these kind of components knowing that those are from my car and i mean even just to see this piece removed and taken out i'm always fascinated by engineering um, and how they always craft yeah certain shapes uh to to fit nicely and you know this this air scoop is is no different really um everything is really precision engineered even just getting the the amg logos on is is lovely to look at um, obviously, these are the two throttle bodies on the yeah. on the front, the throttle valve actuators, which provide the uh, mixture into the engine. And we've got the air boxes tucked away as well. Yeah, they're over there, which I believe you're going to be doing something with. That's the plan. Shortly. That's the plan yeah. indeed. So, this has been part of it to investigate all of this yep. to ensure it's all uh, in proper shape and order. But obviously, beyond that are the heat issues. Yeah. So, if you um, come over here, we'll have a look at what we're doing with that. This is a big part of it. Now, it's quite fun to see these. These are, of course, the Rentec headers. That's right. That so we fitted to the car a while back in Germany. They get hot, very hot. They do. So this is a complete manifold unit, really. Um, unusual. Normally, the manifold is, is branched uh, separately yeah. to, the, to the main pipe. It's all one unit. So this sits very, very close to um, the engine wiring harness, which, which runs around the back. Um, and the heat from this is causing lots of sensor issues on the, on the vehicle. Yep. Um, electricity can be very sensitive to heat, especially on cars. Um, so what we're going to do is look to, to manage this heat that's coming off these headers um, to prevent it soaking into the, the engine components. And we've got various different things here that have been provided to us by a company called Funk Motorsport in London. Um, I've had a couple of conversations what would be the best thing to do and they've supplied us with various pieces of equipment here to install so what we're going to do this is lava rock titanium exhaust wrap um, so this is going to be wrapped around the exhaust manifold on each branch down to where the oxygen sensor sits um, and then we're going to wrap the rest of the exhaust in this protective blanket that's now, quite cool yeah now funk motorsport say that this will reduce um temperature from about 600 degrees to about 100 degrees okay wow so it's a mass it's literally a massive blanket. yeah heat blanket protection that we're, we're putting in um and then we they've supplied us some different little things so particularly it was the oil level sensors that yes. were suffering with the heat um, so we've got some protection to go around the sensors itself around the engine wiring harness we've got this um, protective blanket now it looks quite big but it's actually velcro all the way around so yeah. this will will wrap around the wiring harness mm -hmm. and that will just protect the wiring harness in future but what we're going to do this is double thick aluminium heat shield yeah um, it comes in the sheet and we're going to cut a very nice shape of heat shielding and then bolt that around the manifold okay. at the top so it'll prevent 
any excess heat soaking upwards. So really we're trying to do everything we can to, to make sure that this heat isn't going to soak in, it's going to give it extra protection. It's probably a little bit overprotected in some ways. <laughs> hey, if the future of the car's life is anything like its right. life yeah. up till now, it's worth it. Yeah. It's absolutely worth it. I mean, it's, it's obviously been uh, a, a big job and involved a lot of, I suppose, time really for just waiting for parts and waiting for things to come in and mm. sensors. And Again, with the, the, the last thing that we had with it when we were waiting for the engine harness, you know, that took us a while to, to get hold of that. And there's been the same sort of issues with some of these mechanical components. Um, it's not just the, you know, the, the valve buckets, it's the, all the other little seals and gaskets that you need mm -hmm. to, to do it and make sure everything is here. So when you start it, you do it in one job as opposed to take it apart, wait. And realise something's missing and then That's have to right. do it all again. Yeah. So it's always best to do, do everything in one hit. So yeah. even the alternator has been suffering with some, with some heat yeah. um, problems. You see that the back see, of this yeah. has started to melt and get very hot. Yeah. Um, that is actually quite critical because the main charge harness, which comes from the battery, yeah. goes to this. Now they do put a protective plastic cap over that and that mm -hmm. had completely and utterly melted away. Okay. And the nut that held it on was, was blue. You can tell that got very hot. And then you've got the electrical connector which tells the engine that the, the alternator is charging. Um, again, that had suffered some heat damage as well. Um, but we're, we're going to replace this alternator, put a new one on it, mainly because we want to make sure that the internals of this alternator are good yep. as well, uh, whilst we got it apart. And the, the heat management um, protection that we're going to put around that exhaust should protect that. We're not going to put any protection around the alternator. Yeah. That should be just nicely managed with, um, with the stuff that we're doing. So, Yeah, should all help it come back together. Well, it's fascinating to see it. Thank you for all of your You're work welcome. on it. Yeah. Really, really cool to have come in and no. I guess had, had a full update and, and seen how the state of play is. And yeah, well, we, we, like, we like cool cars here. You know, <laughs> as you've seen in your, in your intro, we've got a couple of SLRs here and um, we also have lots of other different types of high performance vehicles in. So it's, it's always a pleasure to, to work on stuff like this oh. and to have it in. So Thank you very much for your patience with it because no, I know it's a, it's a testing project, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Time for us to head back. A very different V8 in here to the one that we have in the SLS, although I cannot wait to have that started up again in the not too distant future. And let's make our way out for the journey onwards from here. There's a whole lot of cars and trucks and things around. Just making sure we're all safe and good and the AC is obviously blasting. Watch out for forklifts and trucks and things. But yeah, how cool was that to come and see the SLS again? It's been far too long and to know that there is actually some progress underway. It is coming back together. I actually need to work out how to turn this down a bit because that is, there we go, a little bit less aggressive. Like I've said many times, it's not that I've sold it. It's not something that I'm trying to keep secret. It's just been an immensely annoying process, as Steve said, to source all of the different ancillaries, the things you need to be able to take the engine apart and put it back together again, to investigate and have a look into it, to go through all the, the different components, to go through everything that could be wrong, to find out and get to the bottom of hopefully these problems. And when it is all back together, I suspect we'll try and go and visit Anthony at GAD, where Tom and Brad on the Museum channel took my C63 Black Series recently to go and pop it onto the dyno and do some investigative work into it as well. Hopefully they can or we can take the SLS up there and go and see how it is after all of this too. So do stay tuned for that. But of course, first up, we'll be returning back out here to come and actually pick it up, to pick it up and take it for the first drive in a while to get it back to the Museum when the time comes. And I can't actually wait for that. I hope we get a day like today because it is absolutely glorious out today and this is quite a fun way to get around i think we're going to be doing many miles with this car with the c500 it just seems to be i don't know it's it's a, a fun way of motoring fairly inexpensively in terms of the car at least without well sorry i was gonna say while still having a smile having some fun out of it just because you know what it was you know how cool it is you know w211 generation e-class so onwards for now, we've got a long old drive ahead of us to make our way back home towards the Schmuseum. 
Fast forward and we are back at the Schmuseum. It has been quite the drive, beautiful weather, but very, very busy roads, lots of traffic. It's taken a while, completely exhausted, but how cool to have gone to see the SLS Black Series again. It's not gonna be long now until it returns here and is parked back where it will live here at the Schmuseum. No, I have not sold it, as I said. It's just been away for an extended period to sort all of this out. In fact, the last time it was here was after I drove it back at Christmas. It stayed here through New Year, just I think until February or so when it went over to Avant Garde to start all of this work. Talking of which, a big thanks to Steve and the team at Avant Garde for all of their help with the car. There's a lot that's involved. I know it's a lot of work as well for those guys, but the SLS Black Series is a very personal car for me. When I collected it, two and a half years ago now, before bringing it back to the UK, I imported it from Germany, hence the left-hand drive nature. It was always one of my dream cars. The only two cars I would ever say I dreamt of more than the SLS Black Series are both a little bit out of reach. Number one, the Ferrari F50. Number two, the Porsche Carrera GT. But the SLS Black Series is my generation. That V8 engine, those gullwing doors, the looks, AMG, everything about it, super, super cool. So I can't wait to get the car back here. Yeah, really excited to have it parked back up. Hopefully in only maybe two weeks or so, we shall see. So stay tuned for that and a first drive back behind the wheel. But for now, that is all. A big thanks again to Steve and the team at Avant Garde. A big thanks as always to you guys for your support. It is hugely appreciated. But that's it for this time. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheers. <laughs>